Shalom, shalom, Yasharala. Oh, I think my mic is going out. Shalom, shalom. It's your girl, Yahweh Yasharala. Hold on. My husband's about to anoint me with the unsuffered pot of oil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's wow. get some people in here. Okay, because we got a nice little lesson today. You know, we should have went live a little bit earlier. Um, people might be at work and stuff. So let's get some people up in here. If you can be a light and share my life to some people, please. All praises to the most high. So we're going to get some people up in here, and then we're going to go ahead and get started with today's lesson, Yasharala. I hope you guys are enjoying your day. Hold on. I'm just trying to get some people up in here. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can share my life for me. You know, I will appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? The most high will appreciate it. The Ruach, Adash will appreciate it. <laughs> All right, you ready, babe? What you doing? Okay, hold up. Why I feel like this thing is like leaning and stuff. Shalom, shalom, shalom. All right. Okay. How you doing, Cedric? I don't see nobody else in here, but I do see four people right now. So. Y'all want to come on in? Okay. Because today we got a good lesson. Important. Uh, fasting. And today is... Today is also Testimony Tuesday. <laughs> Come on, babe. Get on up in here. Y'all know. See, my husband be taking forever, y'all. Like, he's so slow. Like, he's like an old man. You could tell. We get the same time. Yeah, he he quit mm him, -hmm. but he's still an old man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Share this live for me. Shalom, shalom. Come on back. Shalom, shalom. What color will it be? Uh, is the Bible might be might be might be up in this area right here? All right, yeah, you guys. So today we want to talk about the importance of fasting. You know, oh, see, see how see how he dropping stuff, y'all. See how he dropping stuff. I'm about to kill my husband right quick, all right? And then I'm about to finish this live up. <laughs> all right. So we want to talk about the importance of fasting today. Um, anyone who's experiencing sexual immorality or a fornication spirit, we want to go into scriptures on how you can break um, that fornication spirit off of you. Are, are you in there? Yeah, we in there. We in there. All right. So first and foremost, for uh, I can't even talk. First and foremost, I want to say shalom, you guys. I hope everyone's day is going well. And um, let's get started. All right. So many think that fasting is all about not eating. That is just absolutely not true. There's more to fasting than just not eating. There's so much more. So we want to dig deep into fasting and how we can use fasting as a tool to sanctify ourselves and break hold of strongholds that demonic and wicked spiritual principalities may have on us. Okay, so the first scripture we want to go into is Matthew, because we're going to go into a couple of um, the prophets, 
And we're going to talk about how the prophets did their fasting. All right, so we want to go into Matthew 6 and 16, 6, 16 to 18. But before we get into Matthew 6, 16 to 18, I do want to say this. Starting to fast and learning how to fast correctly, you will learn how to separate the spirit from the flesh. The Most High says that we should always walk by the spirit and not by the flesh. So to be able to connect with your spirit, you have to afflict the flesh. To afflict the flesh, you have to learn how to basically deprive the flesh of things that the flesh may want in this earthbound plane. We have our flesh to be able to exist here, but we are a spirit. And to be able to walk fully in that spirit, you got to know how to separate the two. Okay? And you want to say something, husband? Go ahead. Yes. Um, with the fasting, it's basically one of the quickest forms to detach your flesh mm -hmm. from the spirit that's with you. Right. So, when you say fast, you think fast, break, break fast mm. from this flesh and this attachments. Right. So, when you go into a fast, you also want to think about breaking fast from the things that your flesh wants. Break fast from the environment that you are normally at. Mm. So, let's say if you're staying... With family that's always arguing or in confusion or wicked things are on, on the TV all the time or wicked things are being played around you. So you want to get fast away from that and get fast to the most high. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. All praises. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know why this might keep going on. All right. So let's go to Matthew 6. 16 to 18. All right. And 16 to 18. I think we're just going to talk without this because this is, this is just doing too much. All right. So, moreover, when ye fast, be not as hypocrites of sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, but thou, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. So the Most High is basically saying, when we are to fast, we are not to go and blast it out to the whole entire world. We are to keep it to ourselves. This, us fasting, that's that's between us, the Father, and Hamashiach, and the Ruach. That's it. Nobody else don't need to know that you're fasting. The Most High says right here, to keep it to yourself, and he shall reward thee openly. Understand that. So when you are, okay, you know what? I want to go fast. Don't go telling your mama. Go don't don't go telling your friends. Don't go running your mouth. Keep it to yourself. Okay? Let's go to Isaiah 58, 6 to 8. Isaiah 58, 6 to 8. Isaiah 58, 6 through 8. Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? To undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and to thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. 
Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rewards. So the Most High is giving you the benefits of fasting right here to break every yoke, to loose the bands of wickedness, okay? Because when we have bands of wickedness, we may have certain demons and spirits that we got to fight when we come into this truth that we can't do on our own because of the temptation, because of the weakness of the spirit, the weakness of the flesh. So fasting is a tool to break hold from the wicked demonic spirits that Satan calls on you. The spirit of fornication, the spirit of sexual morality, the spirit of lust. The, fasting is a tool to break free of these demonic attachments. Okay? You want to say something on that? Yeah, and also, while, um, while you're in a fast, mm. you want to look at the specific point that you're at. Like like my wife saying, if you're lusting, then target lust. Mm -hmm. If you're lusting, target scriptures about lust while you're fasting. Mm -hmm. So that while you're breaking down that flesh that has an attachment to lust, you're getting a spiritual enlightenment and understanding while you're denying that and coming up against it with the positive rather than uh, rejecting the negative. Right. So while you're replacing it with the particular scriptures... Also, whatever thing that you were feeding into in that area, subtract yourself from it. So if you were lusting through the television, maybe if you were watching pornography, you would get far away as possible from a TV. Mm. Rather than be tempted to turn it on to your lust. Right. So take everything according to your fast that will go against it and flip it around. Like right here in, in the scripture she just read, it says... In, in uh, 58 and 7, it is, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? So you do the opposite of what you would normally do. Right. So if you normally get a coffee and cake every morning, but you've been cutting back on your calories, and you want to fast to get your health up, you would say, hey, I'm going to subtract that coffee and cake for a whole week or let me do it for two or three days to start off. Right. That could be part of your fasting. Mm -hmm. Take little steps. And fasting is very important right now as well. Because you got to understand. You know. These vaccinations are coming. Um, RFID chip is coming. So. Get used to fasting. Mm. Get used to denying yourself now. Because soon you might need a vaccination card just to get into the grocery stores. Got to start thinking about that. Okay? Right. So when you already know how to deny the flesh, it's not going to be so hard for right. you. Imagine, okay? Imagine during um, a famine, or, you know, a pandemic, mm. you being able to look at food and not want to eat it all up. You, you have ability to curve your appetite and maybe eat one time that day and still be lifted in the spirit through perilous times. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's go to Joel. Let's see what the prophet Joel was talking about. Joel 2, 12 to 13. That's Joel 2, 12 to 13. Okay. Are you there, babe? Okay, I'm going to let you get caught up. Therefore, also now, say of the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious, merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repent of him of the evil. So the Most High told the prophet Joel to turn to him and fast and weep and mourn 
And I've noticed by going over these scriptures that a lot of the prophets, when they fast, they weeped and they mourned. They connected with the Elohim. It's bigger than just not eating. It's about detaching completely from this world. Detaching from your flesh. Going into the spirit. Allowing the connection to be between your spirit and the most high. Detach yourself. When you go on a fast. We are to sanctify ourselves. A lot of the prophets, like the prophet Baruch, for instance, in the apocalypse of Baruch, when he fasted, he went to the mountains to fast. He separated himself from the people and the distractions in the world. Because we can't go on to a fast. And then living in a household with somebody that's going to interrupt that and to, and to be used an idle-minded person that can be used by Satan to disrupt your shalom and now your whole fast then been put off on, on the wrong track because you're putting yourself around idle-minded people. Mm -hmm. Now here comes Satan trying to break that. So... When we fast, we are detaching from the world. We are connecting our spirit to the most high spirit. We are connecting with Neshamayim, the heavens. Right. Hallelujah. Khan. Yes. Yes, too. honey, please. You know, um, when she said about Baruch going to the mountains. Mm -hmm. So this is something um, I can relate to about, you know, even when I was in Christianity. If I went to a, like, visited a church and I would try to not get in the front seats, I would try to get to the highest seat, mm. not the closest seat to the front, but the highest to the roof. Right. Because if there was a presence falling down, I wanted to get it first. Mm. So Baruch did one thing that our ancestors do. We'll get to a high place. Like Moshe, he went to the highest mountain. Mm. See, the highest points, the highest elevation will get you the closest away from your foes. Right. Like Israel was down there complaining and griping and moping and transgressing while their leader was ascending mm. in ascension, mm. went to the highest mountain, then dwelled there fasting in the presence. Mm. So they're saying something symbolic. These lower plane frustrations are at your level. Right. So when you want to go higher and deeper planes, you go to different terrain. Mm. So you want to like get eagle. So when you want to get huh. deeper, get when you want to get higher, you got to go deeper in mm. the fasting, deeper in the spirits. Press. Okay. When you want to get an answer from the Most High, we got to be patient because the Most High work on His own time. Mm. Yes, and, and let me tell you another thing. When we read about with Daniel, when he was fasting, he was praying for an angel to come through with a message. Now, I had looked upon this, and Daniel told the angel, Hallelujah. what took you so long? He said, because I was battling in the heavens from the adversarial spirit trying to hold me up with the, with the answer to your prayer. Mm. So, what I learned is, while you fast and you pray, while you're in the Word, while you're in His presence, mm. offer up a praise. Oh, because you yeah, need a clear channel, a clear portal, mm. a clear dimension, clear atmosphere to the Father, to the Elohim, the supplier. Right. So you expect it to ascend into deeper things. So what you do is you keep that arena and that space between y'all open mm. and praise. He said we, we go by Thanksgiving and we enter in by praise. Right. So you approach the Most High. By thankfulness. Right. So the fasting is like you being thankful and you purging that flesh. But also put a praise inside your fast. Right. It'll excel you quicker to the spiritual inclining. Mm, right. I'm giving right. you uh, not cheat sheet, but elite sheet. <laughs> <laughs> elite sheet. Election. Election. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so let's see what David was talking about. Let's go to Psalm 69 and 10. Mm. Let's see what David was talking about when he fasts. So let's go to Psalms 69 and 10. Okay. All right. 
So David said, when I wept and chastised my soul with fasting, that was my reproach. So you want to, King David, do you want to explain what David was talking about here? Let's say, that's what David talked about right here. Mm -hmm. You got it? Yeah, so basically, okay. um, the prophets, when, you know, we always going to have a heart for our people because we are called to our people. Right. We're called to lead and guide and instruct and reprimand the people. So, of course, your feelings going to be in it. Mm. So what happened is these prophets, these leaders of our people would mourn and cry and weep. You know, if you are, let's say you are a mighty ruler in Judea, and then due to disobedience of the people, which you tried to stand in the way, and prophets that gave words to the people, but they refused to turn, and then we let some other nation come take us captive. You think that a leader wouldn't cry and mourn? Mm. To come from out of splendor and glory and then be fed pigs and stuff, and then to profane Yah's altars? Mm. Right. Of course they were mourned going back into captivity. Mm. Of course they were fast because they know the key essential things to get the father attention. Right. right. We try to keep his attention. That's why we're teaching y'all how to get his attention. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So let's go to uh, Luke 4, 2 to, two to 4. Luke 4, 2 to 4, when we talked about Yahweh Shah. So when Yahusha, Yahusha, Hamashiach, whatever name that you use, the Most High is going to get power as long as it's not Jesus. Because when we wake up, we should understand that, you know, right. Jesus, we should do that. Shalom, Shalom, sh Shazak. That's how you say your name. All right. So that's Luke. You want to read that, honey? Luke 4 what? Two, four, two, four. two to four, yeah. Luke four, two through four. Yeah. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were in, ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of Yah, command this stone that it be made bread. And Yahushua answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of Yah. Right. Yahweh. So basically, this is Yahweh Shah. Basically, he did 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, being tempted by the enemy. He still didn't give in. You know, the devil tried to, we all know the story when he was up there and he was fasting. The devil tried to offer him things and he said, get behind me, Satan, for I serve the Elohim. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Yahweh Shah did it too. He went up there, he fasted, you know, um, Let's go to Nehemiah 1 and 4. That's Nehemiah 1 and 4. And it came to pass when I heard these words, when I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And this is Nehemiah who also fasted, mourned, wept, these are the things that the prophets did. Yes, and, honey. And why? Go because ahead, Because above that, he said that the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The mm. wall of Jerusalem mm. also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Mm. So he mourned and cried mm. over his great city where he was raised and he was a leader in. Share this live for me, you guys, so other people can see it if you can thank you all praise to the most high so they're saying that when you are sad when you in a time where it seems like destruction even joe fasted mm. while he was getting the, the whooping boils all on him he was leaking ooze out of his body his wife had to go and Worms. shave her hair to satan Worms. yeah just to give him some bread mm. like we we mount up so when the enemy coming up against you in the flesh, mm -hmm. you mount up in the spirit realm Thank by you. fasting and praying and praise. 
Right. So if they tear at your flesh, but they cannot kill your soul. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, a, a lot of us need to be fasting right now because y'all need to be fasting for downloads from the most high on how y'all going to move when with these vaccinations coming in play. Now, we all know, Yasharala, that the beast is ready to run down on us. We know this. We see everything that's going on. We see how they got everything lined up. We all called this in the beginning of the year. We knew that these vaccinations was coming in December and January. There's video surfacing. I got a video that I'm actually I've done um I'm I'm about to do a voiceover video for you guys in more details of the vaccinations. But y'all need to be fasting on how y'all should move. Y'all need to be fasting on getting y'all answer and, and seeing what the most high want your family to do. Not the next family. Your family. What the most high wants your family to do. So we need to be fasting. We need to be separating ourselves. Sanctifying ourselves. So that we can get a download. From the Shamayim. On how to move. What you got to do. Do you got to be one of the families that got to lead a country? Do you got to be a family that got to hide? How you going to move? Do you got to be a family that's going to um, join with another family that got land? These are the things that we need to be asking the most high. We can't make decisions on our own because this, the, the, these lives don't belong to us. It belongs to the most high. So y'all need to be fasting to get that word. Mm -hmm. Time. Right, right. You need to be fasting to get that word. See, what we do is what I'm starting to do. My husband is used to fasting. Me, before, I used to fast a lot more, but now I got to get back into the routine. So what I do is, because I'm not used to fasting for days at a time, I built myself up. Now, if you look in the scriptures, nobody did intermittent fasting. I mean, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But from my understanding, nobody did intermittent fasting. Didn't you say Enoch might have did it though? Yeah, something similar. Um, okay. Yeah, well, Enoch, he, um, as he was ruling, and he was basically became a king over Salem. Mm. Now, Good. he would fast, like say he started off little. He, he built himself up in welcoming the presence and walking the anointing. So let's say that if he went to a fast today, Mm. He would like fast from in the morning till like sundown or something. Mm -hmm. And then the next day go and do, do regular stuff. Right. That would last for like a week or a month. Then after that, he started fasting a whole from the day all the way to nightfall till the next day or something. Then mm -hmm. that would last for like a week or a month or something. Then after that, he was building mm -hmm. tolerance up basically. So let's say... After a whole day, then he started doing two days instead of just from the morning till evening. Right. So then it's built up. Then he started fasting a whole month mm -hmm. and then going back and living like a regular man with his family. But as he was fasting, he would lock himself in this certain place, mm -hmm. like his um certain room or study room or something. Like a secret place. Yeah. So right. he would lock himself there. And stay with the presence, stay in praise and worship and fasting. And then come out to eventually he just, one day the angels came and said, you coming with us. So, yeah. So he reached a higher plane. Right. So same thing. So with me, like to build myself back up to fasting, what I do is I do intermittent fasting every day of the week. Probably not on the Shabbat though, except the Shabbat, you know, but I'll, I'll, I won't eat nothing like all day. I won't eat anything until like what, like six, seven. We'll both eat something. And that's how you build yourself up to go on one whole day. Then the next time you do it, you do your intermittent fast and then you build yourself up to go two whole days. That's how you build yourself up with intermittent fasting. Okay. But they didn't do intermittent fasting. He, he, uh, my husband did say Enoch did it though. So we're going to learn, need to learn out of the fast as well as the deeds of the famine. Exactly. 
This is why we're bringing the fasting to you guys because the famine is coming very quickly. Soon the vaccinations, you're going to have to have some type of card even to work. So do you understand the times that we are living in right now is no joke. So fasting should be used to summon the most high, to get an answer to him, to afflict the flesh when you have multiple spirits that are attached, like the spirit of lust, the spirit of fornication, the spirit of um, sexual morality. Um, matter of fact, let's go to 2 Timothy 2, 21 to 22. I got a scripture. 2 Timothy 2. All right, to me two, twenty one. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Wow. You out of a pure heart. Wow. Go ahead. I'm, I'm noticing here, like the other scripture you said at first, right. where it says, flee also youthful lusts, but follow mm -hmm. righteousness, faith, charity mm. so that's something i didn't never focus on in fasting that's two different times in two scriptures where it said charity mm. or give to the poor right. bread mm. so while you not eating go feed somebody else oh, that yeah. needs Come to be through. fed Come through. so that's gonna power you up that might make compassion and love spring up in you mm. that, that that glory gonna start building up more and mm. then you're gonna really tap into another dimension in the spirit and then you're gonna unlock something else for that moment Mm. So let's say if you not thirst, you 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 doing a dry fast. Go find somebody. This is what I did before. I cooked for my kids while I was fasting several times. Mm. Cook meals that I want to eat, mm. and looked at myself cooking the that. meal, I've done prepared that. the meal for them, sat them down, and left, mm -hmm. or watched them eat. That's true. That's Kill that flesh. That is true. But mental cook your favorite power, meal bro. and say. Mm. I ain't gonna eat it. I'm gonna serve other people with it. Right. When you can cook for your kids and you know you fasting and you don't touch it. Smelling you don't it. even taste it, bro. That is true mental power. Come on. You got to be That's mentally what strong Israel do. to do we that. We in hard. Right. Hardcore. Right. Climbing mountains. Build, lift, making pyramids. Mm. We ain't weak. Right. <laughs> Why you think we can jump so high and run so fast and we just climbing mountains and picking stuff up for thousands of years. Mm. Hundreds okay. of years in captivity. That power is surging through our genes. Mm. So I got another one. Let's see what Moses did. Exodus 34, 20. I think y'all going to get the point of where I'm trying to go <laughs> with the scripture. Hold up. Is that the correct one? No, I think it's 28. Okay. Yeah, you want to go ahead with Moses, babe. 34. Exodus 34, 28. And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. Mm. So, that dry fast to get that presence of the Most High Ooh, on you quicker. Come through. That dry fast going in cold turkey. Mm. Just waking up with it on your mind. Mm. Like, put you in that Rocky zone. Put you in that Hamashiach. Mm. That's when you get that Bruce Leroy glow. Mm. Right. When you beam up. Right. And, you know, I notice, too, when I fast and don't eat anything, like, I feel illuminated. I don't know if anybody... I know my husband can... Um, 
you can relate to me, right? It feels like an illumination in the spirit. Like you walking around. I can't explain it's a spirit it. man over that flesh. Right. And like it, it just, you can feel it sitting on your flesh. Right. When your spirit is leading your body, mm. your spirit is supposed to sit on top of your body. Come through. That's how you get that glow and that aura. Come through. So I can see the light on you. That means that the spirit is overpowering you. Right. Mm. Come through. Hallelujah. Right. Somebody said they feel the fire. Good. Uh, Hallelujah. I hope that you do hear fire, feel fire over there when we speak. Uh, Hallelujah. Straight from the Shamayim. Straight from it. Okay. Straight from it. Oh, praise the most. All right. God. So I want to do 1 Peter 1 and 2. Because I, because when I seen this, when I seen 1 Peter 1 and 2, I said, oh, no. Yes. Come through. Ruach. Ruach told me to... Uh, Going to the apocrypha, but that's when I did a search and found this scripture, First Peter 1, First Peter 1 and 2. Okay, babe, you go ahead. First Peter 1, 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of Yah, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. So you want Jesus to... Yeah, yeah, so it says right here, accord, elect according to the foreknowledge of Yahuwah, the Father, through sanctification. What is sanctification? Sanctification set is apart. being set apart. When we are fasting, we are sanctifying our flesh and sanctifying our spirit. So we are being set apart when we are sanctifying ourselves. The elect according to the foreknowledge. So what is foreknowledge? Knowledge that the elect has already known. Okay? And when we go into that fast... Some of the information is being known, is being made available to us. Mm -hmm. Many times the Ruach just make the information available. Right. That's to the elect. Okay? Right. So what she's saying is the elect, as you fast, you're going to unlock mm. spiritually there you go. There you go, more man. truth that you already knew or who you are, your identity. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But the true sanctification is the water baptism of repentance and the conversion of your spirit and getting that fire. Mm -hmm. That's true sanctification. Because you're going to protect the fire that it goes not out. Mm. Mm. So get to the perfect in spirit and in heart. Right. And surround yourself with people fire. that are like-minded. In the perfect spirit they, in their heart. They throw gas to the fire. Right. The, the elect. Right. The perfect in heart and spirit, they throw gas on the fire to keep it up. They throw more oil on. They keep oil on their heads to mm. stay lit. Mm. Right. So when you fast, you're supposed to be anointed. You're supposed to be anointed every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That scripture said that the... the some people fast to be seen and make their face look, make their self look terrible, make their self look deprived. But I say when you fast, you still look like a light, a candle. Mm -hmm. You let your light so shine. Right. Right. So fasting is can be used, like I said, for multiple things. But right now, we all need to be fasting. Today, I did an intermittent fast. I didn't eat anything yet. I drank water. That was it. But we all need to be getting into that fast and be figuring out what is the next move. Yes. Because as you know, the vaccinations are being released in December. I guess they're giving it to the health workers and all of them first. After that, that's belief. They, I, matter of fact, they said if you don't take the vaccination, it's going to be deemed criminal. Meaning, you might even get locked up for it. And you know what? I just heard. Hallelujah. Now, today, later, mm. my wife is holding the Testimony Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Testimony so, Tuesday. So, on Testimony Tuesday, I would like to add to this fasting lesson 
on two experiences I had from higher beings during my fast. Oh, well, hallelujah. And one particular mm -hmm. expression was on a mount during my fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we're going to be talking about that on Testimony Jesus. Yes, to, tonight. Because, you know, he going to try to talk now, y'all, and he going to be trying to hold y'all up. Say no. <laughs> But all praises to the Most High. We hope that this lesson bless you guys. Key notes to take. We all need to start fasting. Fasting to get an answer from the Most High. Fasting to afflict your spirit. To learn how to walk in the uh, spirit and not the flesh. Fasting um, for what else? Getting rid answers. of... Getting answers when you want the answers. Please don't go on a fast if you ain't following the law, statutes, and commandments. I'm going to say that one more time because I heard the Holy Spirit um, say that again. Please do not go on a fast if you're not following the, whole, the um, law, statutes, and commandments. Right. I read in the pseudepigrapher, yeah, I mean, I mean, if yeah. you go on a fast and you're not in obedience, you will anger the Most High. Right. And I'm going to pull that up for y'all and show y'all that too to back up what I'm just saying. And you will too. anger the Most High if you're not obedient and you go on a fast. And this too. And your fast always pray for strength mm. from the Spirit. Mm -hmm. To keep you going further than you expect. Mm. When you feel yourself getting weak, this is what I did too. My first time fasting, oh, sister, when huh? I gave food up, I ate the bread of life, the manna, right. the word, the scripts. So while you're not eating tangible food, eat the word. There you go. Eat the word. Mm, sip through. new wine. Mm. When you're not drinking water, sip new wine. Mm. So... Pray for strength before you go into your fast. Because you cannot do this according to your flesh, but by the spirit you can do all things. Right. How the flesh going to help you do something that's going to kill it? Mm. The spirit steps on the flesh. Mm. The incorruptible steps on the corruptible. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To our family. Blessings to you both. This was a... Hallelujah, hallelujah, all praises to the Most High. We're just vessels, you know. When I wake up in the morning, you yes, know, I, I sit and I, after we're done praying, mm -hmm. I sit and I wait for a word from the Most High and the Ruach Kadash so that we both can bring it to you guys. Right. And I waited some time. Yesterday, I waited, I waited, I waited. I didn't get anything yesterday. Right. So we only move when the Spirit tells us to move. Like, literally, you can ask my husband. I'm like, hey, like, I'm trying to get a word. I'm trying, like, I'm trying. And yeah, we didn't and get nothing yesterday. three hours or four hours today before she actually got it. Yep. Out of four possible other things until it right. sat right on her. Then she went on it right. while I was doing garments. And then we both confirmed that makes sense. Right. Because in this time, we, some of us steal in vain things. Right. We supposed to come out of this world. Coming out means take your spirit out first. And your body and your mind follows that. Right. Right. Hallelujah. 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 So we'll see you tonight at 9 o'clock. Testimony Tuesdays. If anybody want to come give their testimony. Hold up. What was the testimony supposed to be about? So... We want to do thing. tonight, we, it's just not going to be open testimony Tuesday. We want to have a focused topic. So if anybody had dreams about chariots or had any type angelic. of angelic um, visitation. visitation, these are the testimonies we want to hear. I know we do have a brother that has a great testimony. That's brother Isaiah. So I'm going to contact him and see if he can do his tonight. And we have a couple other brothers that I'm going to contact too. To see if they want to join or whatever. So all praises to the Most High. You guys definitely um, like and share this. Also, if you believe in our ministry, you can always donate to us as well. We do not work. We are dedicated to the Most High. Our vessels are dedicated to the Most High at this time right now. The real prophets and the prophetess are coming up and they're coming out. So all praises. You got to have that spiritual discernment to know when somebody is being led by the Ruach. So all praises to the Most High. Shalom, shalom. See you guys tonight. Mwah. One. Shalom.